uh, pretty pretty much like that. On recent panel, you said you couldn't sleep for a year and a half or something, and mm -hmm. that you cried for a lot of that time. How difficult was that period mm -hmm. in life for you? Because we know as men and as black men, we're starting to get into a space where we talk about not only mental health, but emotional health. Right. And we've learned ways to be vulnerable and open. Mm -hmm. But to share that in a room full of people, I mean, that's something that you felt deeply. Mm -hmm. How did you find a way to get through that time while also having to still be a father, a provider, right. and do your job? You know, I, I feel like you'll never get through that, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of praying, a lot of knowing that God is real. God is actually truly real in my life. A lot of stillness, man. When you sit still a lot, you know, you can hear a lot of things for me. A lot of isolation, solitude, and um, just knowing, you know, if I can just put one foot in front of the other, you know, and take it a day at a time. Because I'm, I'm taking it a day at a time, still to this day. Really? Oh. Yeah, I just take it a day at a time. You know, black men have feelings. You know, black men hurt. Black men are in like pain and sometimes we don't have outlets to, you know, like talking to you now. No one really asked me these questions, never really. So it's like sometimes we feel like we're dealing with it alone, not unless you have like a therapist or, a, you know, a close confidant or like friend. But um, it's, it's not easy because it feels like as a black man, you can't show vulnerability to the world, you know, because it's a form of weakness. But it should be looked at as a form of strength, you know, like men do need to cry, you know, because when it's all bottled up, you know, and, and inside, you know, that's when stress, things can happen, different tensions. You got to be able to have a, a outlet to release. Like I said, that's the only way that you can get to the true healing of everything. So, um, yeah, when I was speaking in Miami, that's just how I was felt, how I felt at the time, mm. you know. So to this day, I just, I look at my kids and say, Daddy got you forever. You know, I look at my daughter, you know, when they smile at me and they know Daddy really loves them. My son knows Daddy really loves me. That's what brings me joy right now. And that's what keeps me saying, I'm, I'm on my way. I want to be the biggest in the world, you know, from a humble place, but I feel like from a skill set, I feel like I am that dude. Like, that's just how I really feel. And I feel like I can step into that more because of my children, because of my mom and having the promise I gave her. And I'm, I'm ready to do all those things. So That's, that's dope. And I like that. Um, one thing that I like about it is that he's negatively motivated. And he said, listen, I'm using this to propel me forward. Yeah, I'm hurt. Yeah, I'm broken. And I think that people don't understand that everybody got feelings. And even me, right? I say um, never make an emotional decision. And from what I can tell, Corey Hardwick has not made an emotional decision at all. Everything that he says is calculated. Uh, he don't get messy. Even when people ask him, you know, strategically about stuff like this, um, he don't throw her under the bus. He don't say none of that. When he's seen her on a red carpet and it looked like they were surprised and it got caught on camera, he didn't trip. He just gave her a hug and he kept, kept it moving and he kept it real. And so he's, for the most part, a 100% stand-up dude. And when he said, listen, I'm him and I'm going to be the best in the world. And it's almost like him getting out of this situation or her graduating from divorce unleashed him it's like it unleashed him to the world so now he gotta go extra he gotta really get it he gonna really take care of it because now he on a mission to make sure that his kids in his words his kids are gonna be taken care of forever and that they always gonna be good and daddy got you and it kind of at the same time makes tia maury look even worse and it actually embarrasses black women to an extent or women as a whole and I'll explain to you why. Two reasons. Number one, the first reason why kind of it embarrasses her is because now she's on a show. She's on a show gallivanting, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and doing all of these extra dates and all of this stuff. And women was always supposed to be 
on the low, not for everybody. Not You know what I'm saying? That's not supposed to be a thing. And so when you see her on there and then on top of that, one of the things that she said in the preview was that her and her sister is not even messing with each other anymore because Tamara is over there married, living her life, living a good life, while Tia is over there, you know what I'm saying, doing what she do on TV and being for the streets and creating TikToks and showing her ass and stuff like that. It's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing. And so when she went on a whole tour talking about she graduated from marriage, but now she in the streets talking about she lonely, it makes her look even worse. And the more that he's an upstanding gentleman and the more he continues to hit, kill it, do these movie roles and absolutely run it up, he's winning. He's always going to come out the winner. You're always going to be better as a result of you learning from your mistakes and then using that as, as, as energy to propel you forward. The second reason why it looks bad is because her popularity comes from her toxicity. Let me say that again. Her popularity comes from her, her toxicity. And the reason why it's embarrassing for women, specifically black, for spe specifically black women, is because they are supporting this. If you go in and you look at the comments of whenever it is that she says she for the streets and stuff, they are the number one cheerleaders. You would think that he did something wrong. They act like He's the worst person on earth. When you see him talk and he and he says and he he shows a level of vulnerability in which I see some similarities uh, between him on a, on a, you know, visible scale between him and Tyrese. Tyrese will crash out way more than Corey Hardwick. And I would understand why, because Tyrese is getting took to the cleaners by a chick that nobody would have ever known had it not been for Tyrese, but she asking for the world. And she 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 absolutely trying to destroy this guy. And I don't know what the vindictive nature of these women are. It's almost like, I'm just looking like, wow, that's crazy. But Tyrese is absolutely getting destroyed and took to the cleaners, right? But Corey Hardwick, he's, ex he's kind of explaining a similar thing like Tyrese would explain it as far as the vulnerability of men and the fact that men have feelings too. And they are not acknowledged. They are not celebrated. There is nowhere for them to turn to. They have to figure that shit out. They 100% have to figure it out. And so I feel him. I understand what he's saying, but I'm glad that he's able to maintain and, and, and keep his composure and focus on what he's supposed to focus on and dedicate himself to his craft and not let them get, not let this get him down, but running it up but on the flip side i think that tia maury is looking more embarrassing every single day i have not seen publicly her make a smart move or a wise move and maybe she is getting to the bag but i don't think that that's the whole whole of it um whenever you have children the children come first and so every decision that i make or every decision that men make they tend to do it on the behalf of their children meanwhile women tend to go more selfish and say i've graduated from marriage now of course we know that that's not all women and we're not trying to put that on all women, so that's not a thing. But at the same time, we have to look at our examples because from a cultural perspective or from an influential perspective, it's bad for us because it influences people that are watching to follow that same behavior. And that's one of the reasons why they call them influencers. Just my opinion anyways. Let me know what you think inside of the comments. I, I really want to know what y'all thoughts, thoughts are on this, uh, on Corey Hardwick and his expressions and his emotions and his thoughts and how he still remains a stand-up dude versus what we've recently seen from Tia as far as her saying that her sister don't even fuck with her no more. You know what I'm saying? And the sister is the good one. The sister stay out of the spotlight. The sister is focused. But anyways, let me know what y'all think inside of the comments. Also, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description. I just dropped a video that's fire today. And then last but not least, make sure y'all pick up y'all tickets. Um, I will be in Atlanta. It's going to be dope. Atlanta. I'm going to be in Atlanta on November 2nd. Get your tickets. Discount code Anton. Detroit on December 14th. It's going to be lit. And then last but not least, make sure y'all get that Tej Henley 40% off your first order plus a free gift. Shout out to uh, Corey Hardwick. Stay holding it down, big dog.